Once again, a uh, very warm welcome to all of you to our uh, communion service. Um, I do hope and pray that you will be blessed uh, by our worship and uh, listening to what God's word and taking part in communion. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 138. Let me read just a few verses. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. I sing praise to you before the gods. I face your holy temple by thine and praise your name because of your constant love and faithfulness, because you have shown that your name and your commands are supreme. You answered me when I called to you. With your strength, you strengthened me. Let us bow our heads and pray. Loving and Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We have come with sincere hearts to offer you our worship, to honor your name through our singing, through our reading, through our prayers. And Lord, as we come before you to celebrate the communion to remember the death and resurrection of your Son. We ask you to come and touch our hearts, our minds, point out the black spots in our lives, the sins we have committed and we don't even know. We invite your Holy Spirit to warn us, to encourage us, to lead us so that we can live a life that is pleasing to you. And we thank you that a week in and week out, as we come out to worship you, you have always, always shown us the way. And so with that expectation and anticipation, we come to you this morning. We want to receive you what you have to give to us. But we want you to receive what we give you. And through this mutual interaction, we may receive your blessings. Hear our prayer as we offer it in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us stand together if we can and we sing our first hymn, Mission Praise number 560, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Good morning. The first reading today is taken from the Old Testament and we're reading Psalm 130. Uh, this can be found around page 619 in the Pew Bibles. So the heading is A Prayer for Help. From the depths of my despair I call you, Lord. Hear my cry, O Lord. Listen to my call for help. If you kept a record of our sins, who could escape being condemned? But you forgive us so that you should, we, we should stand in awe of you. I wait eagerly for the Lord's help, and in his word I trust. I wait for the Lord more eagerly than watchmen wait for the dawn, than watchmen wait for the dawn. Israel, trust in the Lord because his love is constant, and he is always willing to save. He will save his people Israel from all their sins. 
The second reading is from the New Testament and it's from 1 John chapter 2 reading from verse 12 and this can be found on page 303 in the Pew Bible. I am writing to you my children because your sins are forgiven for the sake of Christ. I am writing to you fathers because you know him who has existed from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have defeated the evil one. I am writing to you, my children, because you know the Father. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has existed from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you are strong. The word of God lives in you and you have defeated the evil one. Do not love the world or anything that belongs to the world. If you love the world, you do not love the Father. Everything that belongs to the world, what the sinful self desires, what the people see and want, and everything in this world that people are so proud of, none of this comes from the Father. It all comes from the world. The world is everything in that the people desire the people desire is passing away. But he who does the will of God lives forever. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Those of you who uh, don't know, we started this uh, this series uh, on First John, a letter of First John, and uh, we are uh, well into it. Uh, for the last few weeks, we have been thinking on uh, chapter 1, and the uh, uh, first part of chapter 2 we looked at last week. And since we began this uh, series, I have been reminding us all that John wrote this letter to Christians, John wrote this letter to a church in order to warn, to assure, especially to assure them where they stand in relation to God and Jesus Christ. And to give them tools to show how they can differentiate between those who call them Christians and those who are actually are real Christians. And we looked at last week a couple of marks of a true Christian. And one was the obedience. It doesn't matter how much we know about scriptures or about Jesus Christ. What matters is to obey him what he says. And then the second one was, as we obey, we also walk like Jesus. The way he lived his life, we are to follow that pattern and continue to live that life. But that's not all what John writes. He has penned this letter to encourage the believers of his congregation. And that's the part that I want to look at this morning. The encouragement for the believers. In our reading, our second reading this morning, he begins by addressing three kinds of people in the church. And I believe that is the kind of mix we have in our congregation and in congregations out with our own So he addresses the little children. He uses Greek word technia in chapter 2 verse 1. Then he addresses young people and he uses different word for that. Pedia. There's no real difference between the meaning from technia and the word pedia. However, 
word, second word, pedia, can imply youthfulness and faith. And the final word, uh, the final group he addresses is the great warriors of faith. The fathers. Generally speaking, these kind of people are in every congregation. Those who are newly born in faith, those who are born in faith but young, and those who are mature in faith, who are ahead of some of us in their faith journey. If that is true for every congregation, then it is true for us. And so if John is encouraging his congregation, addressing these these three groups and congregation, he is addressing to us this morning. He gives individual encouragement to these groups. For example, he encourages fathers, which means all who are mature in faith, men and women. These people have walked with the Lord for a number of years. Their faith has been tried and proven. The Lord and they had been through many things together. And yet some important things remain the same. And that is that they have known the Father from the beginning. Who is from the beginning? You see, older in the faith, spiritual maturity and possessing qualified spiritual authority and leaderships are the people that he is, he is addressing in this group. They well understood that new is not always better and the old is not always bad. But it can be equally true that new is not always bad and the old is not always good. And so he encourages this group who have worked with the Lord for a number of years and so in that process their faith has matured. But then he addresses the young people, young believers, who are growing in faith. And now the phrase young, young men or young people refers to those who may be young in age or who are young in their spiritual maturity or both. He says to these young champions of Christ who are engaged in the battle against Satan in verses 13 and 14, especially second parts, and the evil system of the world in verse 15. And in this fight, John notes the certainty of victory in verses 13 and 14, first parts. And he specially uses the word Nikaio, that is in perfect tense, and know most of you know better grammar than me. It means to conquer or to achieve victory. They conquered in the past, and the result of that victory, or results of that victory, are and will remain in effect. The victory came to these young people and young folks in faith when they first put their faith in Christ. Because he won the victory over Satan and devil and the world, by putting their faith in him, they share that victory. And John knows that this is important to highlight this fact to those who are young in faith. Because he knows that we, none of us can 
overcome temptation and escape error unless there is hope of winning there is no motivation to fight think about a soldier who may be fighting and he knows that there is no hope of victory he might continue to fight just out of passion passion not to be defeated by dishonor but the fact is if there is no hope there is no motivation when all hope is gone strength goes vigilance goes motivation goes and a great dark cloud come and settle down on the soul That's why the last half of the verse 14 tells us the weapons that defeat the devil is the word of God. And so John says, I write, I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. That is the encouragement for the younger folks. The question is, where does this strength really, continue strength, comes from where does this hope to continue fighting against these forces evil forces come from i think it comes from when john encourages them all as a whole as a congregation as a group of people by assuring them that their sins have been completely forgiven i think that is the most encouraging news for his church and so it is for us receiving forgiveness of sins is very important and to know the fact that we our sins are forgiven is even more important because for root of all problems is sin and someone has very aptly aptly written says sin by its nature wrecks human lives warps relationships and destroys everything in its path and that's why i think the psalmist writes what he writes he is deeply aware of this fact in our seven in our first reading in psalm 130 for him sin is not a lapse of judgment or mere lapse of judgment or an unimportant error but he recognizes that if sin is a force that cracks open the dike releasing the chaotic waters that destroy life for him sin matters not because it sends us to hell but because it makes life hell here on this earth but he also knows the good news that god doesn't keep the record of our sin god's disposition is not to keep a spreadsheet so to speak of sin and save it to a multiple uh, backup systems in order to just pull out whenever he wants to to remind us or to make us feel guilty or to convict us even if god did just that to keep the record of our sins then sama says no one can stand and there is no hope but the truth is that god's disposition is toward grace and to forgive and this truth is sama's hope and so this truth is our hope it is this confidence that keeps the psalmist afloat 
and hoping to continue waiting on him continue to move forward continue to fight on i think that that is our hope too and that's why i think john wants to encourage his readers and to us saying your sins are completely forgiven and to advance in our journey of faith it is important to have this assurance of the forgiveness of our sins those who put their trust and accept jesus as their lord and savior their sins are completely forgiven now i know there are many people in our congregations who are unsure about their own forgiveness and they try to do various sorts of things or all sorts of things attending this meeting and that meeting being member of that society and this society attending this group and that group hoping that at least something will work this reminds me of um uh, some so called doctors in remote areas of very very remote areas of uh, uh pakistan i would say uh, you go there and uh, there is, you find a shop um it is a shop where you can find everything is a one stop shop if you like you can find vegetables there you can find biscuits and you can find all the sweets but you can also find medicine there and there's only one man who has no idea of what the illness may be and so what he does is he puts his hand in a something in a in a box he he gets a you know a bunch of tablets and he rolls it in the uh, in a paper and he gives it to to anybody who comes uh, with a complaint of any disease hoping that one of these tablets will work this is how we are sometimes in our christian faith when we are not sure about our relationship to 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 god or relationship with god or we are not sure about our forgiveness then we try all sorts of things hoping that one of that might work and so let me ask this morning as i finish are you sure that though your sins are forgiven if any of us is unsure about this then today this moment is the time to do away with that that uncertainty to put that uncertainty aside confess our failings and i can assure you as the servant of god and reader of his holy word that your sins will be completely forgiven there is no need to have any kind of doubt after that yes we do make mistakes that we do make errors but god doesn't keep that record we can come to him confess our failings and we are reconnected with him i pray that we receive that forgiveness today this table is a reminder of that great work that christ did for us giving his life dying on the cross and rising from death so that our sins are forgiven take this opportunity receive it reconnect with christ amen let us continue worshiping god and we bring our offerings to him and as we do so we sing mission praise number 396 just as i am without a one plea
Heavenly Father, we come before you once again, thanking you what you have given to us. We are so thankful that your blessings keep coming to us. And sometimes we are not as appreciative of those blessings as we should be. But this morning we thank you that you have given us material blessings. You have given us the blessing of family, the blessing of friends, and so on and so forth. We come to you with thankful heart and we bring some of it back to you appreciating what you do for us. And so, Lord, we ask you to receive these offerings as we bring them as a token of our love for you. We ask you to give us wisdom, understanding, to use these offerings in the right way for the uplift of your people in this congregation and beyond and to bring hope to the hopeless. In Jesus' name, Amen. This morning we have come together to celebrate the communion of the saints. This is not merely a tradition that we carry out four times a year. This event, this supper is a very meaningful supper. It reminds us a specific time and event in history. And not only that, it reminds us the command of our Lord and Savior, who specifically said, to take part in the supper until he comes again. And so Paul writes to Corinthians in his first letter, chapter 11, verses 23. He says, For I received from the Lord the teachings that I passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. This means that every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we are glad to obey the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To do this in memory of him, in memory of his death, in memory of his resurrection. Let us bow our heads and pray. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to take part in this wonderful, wonderful supper in memory of what you have done for us. We thank you that you came to this earth to live our life and then, in obedience of your Father's will, you went to the cross, took upon yourself our sins, gave your life, and defeated all that stood in our way. You tore down that wall so that we could be reunited with the Father again. And so we remember that event in history, 
when you took the bread and you gave thanks. You took the cup and you gave thanks. So Lord, we this morning take this bread and take this cup and we give you thanks for your body and for your blood. We take this bread and take this wine and we set them apart for this holy purpose and holy use. And we ask you to bless us as we take part in this memorial. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he, after he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Eat from it, all of you. Any one of us in this room who has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior is warmly invited to take part in it. Let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for this opportunity to take part in this memorial service. A service that reminds us of your great work of salvation for us, and not only for us, for the entire universe. Thus, giving them the opportunity to come and be united with you, giving their lives to you, accepting you, their Lord and King. And so, Lord, we ask you now to empower us to live the life that may show that we are your true disciples. We are so glad that this event, a communion, is a celebration for us, celebration over the, over the victory of not only our evil desires, but the one who always takes us away from you, the Satan. We have no obligation and now no power over us. There is no guilt left. We can say no to sin and temptation. And we thank you for all that. Lord, receive our worship as we continue to offer it to you this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me remind you that tonight uh, will be uh, an evening service and uh, there will be uh, communion uh, also for those who you know that uh, uh, were unable to come out this morning, please do remind them uh, that there will be a communion in the evening upstairs in the, main, uh, in the hall. So please do come along. Uh, there is no harm to come again and take part in the service and also take part in the communion. Let us stand together and uh, conclude our worship this morning by singing this very well-known hymn, To God Be the Glory. Let us sing really with our heart and our mind and our strength. And as you go from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. <laughs>